In this video, we're going to go over the formula for the standard deviation of a portfolio, step by step, and walk through a two asset example. This is going to be another one of those looks worse than it really is formulas, but after we break it down, hopefully it won't seem so tough. First, let's look at the general in asset case. To find the variance, and thus the standard deviation, we need the weight, or the percent of dollars, of each asset in the portfolio. The standard deviation of returns of each asset and the correlation between each pair of assets. For a two asset portfolio, this isn't too bad, but when you have more than two assets, it gets a bit busy. Note that the in asset case can be shown in two different ways, using either the correlation coefficient between asset I and J, designated by rho, or the covariance between I and J. Looking at the equations and the box to the right, you can see that algebraically, these two formulas are identical. Substituting the equation for correlation, rho, into the upper equation, the denominator cancels out and you have the lower formula. Here's an expanded view of the n asset case for n equals 4. Let's look at how this plays out with the two summation signs. You start with the outside sigma and i is equal to 1. Then let the inside summation run j from 1 to 4, with i remaining at 1 the whole time. Then i goes to 2, and j runs from 1 to 4 again, and repeat. It's a lot of calculations. This further expands the 4 asset case. Let's start by looking at the two tables to the right of the formula. The first table recaps the data needed for each asset, weight, percentage of dollars, and standard deviation. The second table is the correlation matrix. We only need half the table, since the correlation of asset 1 to 2 is the same as the correlation of asset 2 to 1. And we only need six correlations for a four asset case, since the correlation of an asset to itself is 1, the diagonal of the matrix. So for n equals 4, we need 4 times 4 is 16, minus 4, 12, divided by 2. We need six correlation elements. Now let's look at the equation components down the right-hand side. This column expands the 4x4 four four table to exactly what that equation component looks like. The last column, equation number, is showing us which equations are the same. For example, look at both equations numbered 6. The first one is 2 to 3. The second one is 3 to 2. This is where the 2 times comes into play in the resulting equation. Note that we end up with 10 equation components. One for each asset, 4. One for each individual correlation matrix entry, 6. In this final look at the 4 asset case, focus on the table at the bottom. The first four equations are the 4 for each individual asset. The weight squared, the standard deviation squared, and the correlations, which are 1, so that drops out. The second set of 6 equations are the ones for each correlation matrix entry times 2, since each occurs twice once, and a mirror image. Final tips on the number of components for portfolio standard deviation. You're going to have one squared component for each asset in the set, and the number of correlation components is going to be n squared minus n quantity divided by 2. So for us, that's 10. More than two assets gets pretty complex. Bringing this down to the two asset case makes it more manageable. First component, weight of 1 times weight of 1, is weight of 1 squared. The covariance of asset 1 with asset 1 is the variance of asset 1. Note that the middle two terms, the covariance of 1 and 2, is the same as the covariance of 2 and 1. So that's where your 2 comes in. And finally, you have the squared entry for asset 2. And there's your equation. Okay, let's walk through an example for a two-asset portfolio. Standard deviation of asset A is 20%. Asset B, standard deviation, 40%. Correlation between A and B, 0.35. With these three variables, we can work out the risk or standard deviation of a range of portfolios combining these two assets in varying weights. This slide shows the full expansion for asset A and B from 100% A to 100% B. Note that I've broken the equation down into three components corresponding to the three parts of the equation. This is definitely a case where trying to pack the whole calculation into one cell in Excel is just too error prone. Let's take a step-by-step -step look at one line in the table from the previous slide. Using a weight of 30% for A, 70% for B, let's walk through the steps to find each component part of the equation. 
component one is the weight of a squared times the standard deviation of a squared. Component two is the weight of b squared times the standard deviation of b squared. Component three is the factor that drives the diversification benefit. It combines the weight of a, the weight of b, standard deviation of a, standard deviation of b, and the correlation between the two. Adding these three components results in the variance of 0.0938. Take the square root of the variance and you get standard deviation, 30.62%. In this video, we've gone over the formula for standard deviation of a portfolio step by step, including breaking it into its component parts for easier, hopefully error-free, computation. As complex as a portfolio standard deviation formula can appear, when simplified into parts, then assembled, it should not present a problem.